whip the women and wait on somebody to come and save us from ourselves. Now we're going to have to change our minds about that. We're going to have to stand up. And if we don't stand up, Almighty God is going to plummet us down into a most despair condition, into his suffering, shame, and death in greater degree than what we are already in. Because it's not God's will, it's our will that we suffer and we be shamed and we die. The bottom line is this. We as men must address this deplorable, despicable thing that's happening to us in our communities across uh, uh, Memphis, Tennessee, as well as across the nation. We're all facing, black America, the exact same trauma, all of us. That's why I'm proposing next week. The commission of this, uh, the, the commission against senseless killing, will host a meeting of men. That's April the second, eleven o'clock, in E. H. Crump Park, also renamed and dedicated Victims of Violent Crimes Park, and that's located on E. H. Crump Boulevard, next to the old bridge. Now, what we're going to be doing there is convening men to address the problem. We're going to come together and I, we have to stay there all day, all night. We should not leave that park until we have a solution. We're not excluding women, but this is a man, a men Get, get together. A mean purpose. Okay. We are going to have to decide once and for all and we're going to represent our city. We're going to have to decide if we're going to continue to allow our community to be terrorized, our children to continue to be killed, and our women to continue to be in fear. We're going to have to decide whether we're going to allow that to happen or whether we're going to do something about it. As I mentioned last week, I mentioned this to a man, what we're planning to do. And the first response come out of, came out of his mouth was, they won't let us do it. They won't let us do that. You, know, you think about that. Think about it. You're in a state of crisis. Blood flowing down the streets like a river of your own offspring and your own people. And a man says they won't let us protect ourselves and our children. Who the hell is they? What are you talking about? Let they get in the way. That's the, that's, the, that's the answer to that question. Let they get in the way of us protecting our children and our women folk. Okay, okay. I look forward to seeing you, the men. Bring your boys with you. And let's solve this problem once and for all. That's April 2nd, which is next Saturday, at 11 o'clock in E.H. Crump Park next to next to what we call in Memphis the old bridge. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you, brother. And to all the real men, please show up. <laughs> Don't let they hinder us from coming together. Okay, we, we're about to transition into our topic for today, which is, should African Americans participate in the political and voting process? Why or why not? Again, should African Americans participate in the political and voting process? Why or why not? And call us, uh, please feel free to call in. Uh, I'm going to open this up to, to Brother Omar.
you know, uh, thank you for listening in the audience and thank you for bringing your children to the radio. I have um, been in, in the voting mode since I was old enough to vote. And as I look at the, uh, the, you know, the evolution of this particular democratic and, uh, process, with the Republicans on one side, the Democrats on the other side. At first, I thought it was a circus with Donald Trump, Cruz, Rubio, or, or Rubio and others. Uh, and then I found it was a zoo. But they have wild animals in this particular zoo. And as I look at the, the way the people are choosing, uh, Donald Trump is the face of white America. And you can see by that face, white America has not changed much since the days of slavery. But neither is Ted Cruz any better. Mm -hmm. And then when you look on the other side of the coin, the Democratic prospects, Hillary Clinton, who is one of the vilest and the most evil women I know. I know women voted for her in Tennessee in overwhelming numbers. They gave her the big black vote in Mississippi in overwhelming numbers. But you're voting for a woman who is a straight-out criminal, a straight-out gangster. And if you knew who you were voting for, you would know you were voting for Satan if not saving the first cousin. Mm -hmm. So be careful in this election cycle who you vote for. Minister Farrakhan said that the only one that actually has some will for the people, not just white people, but the people, is Bernie Sanders, but he said he can't do it by himself. Mm -hmm. When you listen to Bernie Sanders, you realize that Hillary Clinton has now stolen all of his talking points. And so now she sounds like him. Mm -hmm. But Hillary Clinton is just doing that to get you votes. So if she comes to the to the to the to the forefront and she becomes the presidential candidate on the Democratic ticket, you either vote for Satan, you're gonna vote for Beelzebub, or you're gonna vote for the devil. Yeah. All votes are the same. Yeah. Right now. All right on, brother. Right. Now, before I go to the next panel, I, I want to take the call. Caller, come on. Yeah, can you hear me? Yes, yes, sir. Yeah, can I come? Hey, look. How you doing, brother? Yeah, you know, on the topic of your show, absolutely. Quote unquote black Americans. There's a difference between black Americans and objective black Americans. And all black all of them are not the same in this country. I don't know why people try to lump them all up that way just because they look a particular way. But absolutely they should vote. One reason, most important reason, is because they're United States citizens. United States citizens are protected by the U.S. Constitution to exercise their right to vote. And especially on a local level, a state level, in this instance. Because the local politics affects you directly. Local politics affects you as it applies to the school district, mm -hmm. applies to your local representation. The thing that should be done is that in order to address a problem like what you are talking about convening in this part, you should address that problem, identify that problem, and choose someone to go to your local state house or your local your local your state state house or go to your local a representative, your council meeting or whatever structure that you have and address that problem. Bring back home the bacon as they say. So yes, that's the way it should be. And Donald Trump is not the face of white America. You know, Donald Trump has support coming from all the different diverse groups here in this country, and that's the way it is. Thank you, caller. Thank you. And the number to call in to get on the show is 901-327-2500. Okay, I'm going to continue to ask this question uh, to our panel. Uh, Jeffrey, would you take on the question? It's a twofold question. Can I have it again? Um, what is politics and should quote quote African Americans participate in the political and voting process? Why or why not? All right. We're gonna go start off with that first question, what is politics? And I just came across a few definitions. Um, politics, we're gonna define that as the art or science of government or governing, especially the governing of a political entity such as a nation. Um, 
I wanted to go through another another uh, definition for you too, because abortion. I, I I don't really like that particular uh, definition. Uh, I've got another one here. Uh, the activities associated with the governance of a country or other area, especially the debate or conflict conflict among individuals or parties having or hoping to achieve power. I kind of like this one a little bit better uh, because um, because of the ending. Um, it says that this has to do with the debate or conflict among individuals. Um, many individuals create groups, of course, or parties having or hoping to achieve power. So just let, let's go with the word power. <laughs> We're going to find that too. The ability to do something or act in a particular way, especially, or, or act in a particular way. Another definition would be the capacity or ability to direct or influence the behavior of others. That's why I wanted to go through these definitions, because you see, politics have to do with power. And power, when it comes to um, social phenomena, it has to do with the ability to direct or influence individuals or group of people. So um, as a backdrop, now I'd like to move on to answering the um, second part of that question. Should African Americans vote or participate in the political process? That question for me has always been difficult to answer. Um, so I, I'm going to answer the best way that I can. Um, my opinion is that and I want you to understand what I'm saying. My opinion is that your vote counts, but your vote doesn't necessarily matter. <laughs> okay. Once again, your vote counts, like one, two, three, four, but you know it doesn't necessarily matter. Uh, and the reason why I say that is because we have to become involved in our local communities uh, economically. Um, so that we can can um, know what the problems are in our community and find out those people in our community who are actually working in the interest of the community. That right there is uh, the beginning of the political process when you find those who have a will to do for the people. And so um, in that sense, yes, it's very important that we participate in the political process um, because the political process have to do with how good services and resources are going to be distributed within a certain location. And so if you don't have any say-so in that, it's kind of like uh, the, the powers that be are going to sting or are going to spoon food you or are going to spoon feed you or um, pretty much they're just going to control you because you don't have a voice. Um, so I, I think that we should put more emphasis in participating in the political process. And once we get... Um, Please. Once we get to a point to where we're um, strong, where we have a um, consensus or an agenda as a united community, then our votes, when we select those people who are going to um, represent us, then our votes will see that they matter a little bit more than just counting. Okay. All right. Thank you, brother, for your comment. Uh, brother Talu, I went uh, this week, I went around asking, you know, young brothers, the same question. Mm -hmm. And I got a response from one young brother. He said, why should we participate if we are still fighting against discriminatory practices? So I wanted you to answer that question for this young brother that's, that may be listening today. Mm -hmm. And I'm going to pose it to you again. Should African Americans, quote, participate in the political and voting process? Why or why not? That's, that's a very important question. Um, for years, I've heard individuals and organizations um, fundamentally standing against our participation in the political process. But as a people, we have overwhelmingly accepted the political process. Mm -hmm. We're voting in the millions. So even if uh, groups or individuals did uh, appear to want to turn back that tide, it's going to be extremely difficult. 
Okay. In other words, it's not going to happen. Okay. Politics is, and some people say it's ugly, it's nasty, it's this, it's that, you know. But actually, politics is about policy. Mm -hmm. It's policy. Okay. And it's about who can or what group or entity can create change policy. Okay. How policy is going to affect one's life. Okay. What are you what policy are you going to implement to get something out of the government? This is what politics is. Now, the act of how you get the policy is something else. Okay. Is diplomacy involved? Finances involved? Um, uh, intelligence, strength, and power. Okay. Now, if you're lacking, if, if a people is, as our people are, are lacking in several of those principal points, we have no power. So what we do primarily, primarily is rely on and depend on skin color. We want the black guy to win. In Memphis, we always want the white guy to win. That's just the way we are in Memphis, you know. So we think the white guy and gals are going to implement the policies that's going to help us out in our lives. That's not going to happen. <laughs> you know, see, politics is a short process. Right. It's either two years or four years. Right. That's very, very short. So what happens is these in, 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 in politics there's a lot of meetings, negotiating, and this, that, and other going on to enact or create a policy, right? Uh -huh. Okay. And it's it's not twenty-four hours a day, seven days a week. It may be four hours a day, three or four days a week for these debates to go on about policy. So when they get through dealing with their own lives and their own policy, they meaning the white guys, yeah, they just don't have enough time mm. to deal with yours mm. or right. ours. Okay. Okay. So, so the bottom line is politics is about your intellectual power in the process. If you have none, you don't want to vote. Thank you. Just that simple. Thank you. Call him. Come on, call him. Go ahead, call him there. Go ahead, Al. How you doing, Brother Omar and Brother uh, Tyler and the rest? Yeah. Hello, hello, hello. You know when Dr. King and uh, John Rose were getting his head whooped on that sale of bread, I said, man, well, why don't somebody do all this? They wanted to vote some of those Democrats out of the, out of the, like courthouses and out of those front positions. This is what I'm saying. Uh, that uh, uh, our vote, we should use our vote. Why? Wow. So when I said that, when he said, uh, hold them out of office, when they, especially when they ask you how many bubbles in the bar, so we we can uh, like the African American vote in our vote society of Bernie win or Hillary win. This is what I'm saying that if we have a president and he's African American. He'd rather go to Cuba and say, well, it's a brown thing, but he won't go to Flint. And that's why I said that a lot of African Americans, I need a good example of something. When we was uh, dealing with public education, we didn't want uh, white folks uh, hand me down books, but we still go to their banks and put our money there. We buy their house, uh, we buy their car. You know what self determination is? You can build your own house, uh, even before our. Uh, before our
if we, like you just said, if we didn't vote, then that means you agree with the policy or you don't. I was also told that, you know, a lot of our ancestors died just trying to um, participate in the, in the right to vote. Um, the 14th, 15th, and the 24th Amendment, um, they, they fought to have those amended so we can have the right to be able to voice our opinion or our concerns. So I just wanted to uh, stress that out. Uh, Sister April, uh, if you don't mind, if I can ask you the same question. Uh, should African Americans participate in the political and voting process? Why or why not? Well, I was waiting for it to come around to me <laughs> because my view is totally different. But it's always needed. Right. Uh, okay, so as far as African Americans voting, I'm saying no. Yes, our forefathers fought for us to have a voice, but they, as you can see, we still don't have one. All, all remedies are exhausted with me when it comes to dealing with the government, the police, anybody that I have to depend on that's overhead as far as the United States is concerned. They can't tell me nothing. I, I go out there and I feed the homeless. I don't see them out there helping me. I don't see them coming to the community to do things, to rebuild or help structure. So it, it starts with me. It starts with what I can do to change my outcome. I'm not voting for Donald Trump because he don't care about us. Hillary Clinton, who is she? Nobody. They not helping us. They not going to rebuild us. Dependency, we got to let it go. We got to stop depending on the government to have our back, to help uh, make changes when it comes to us. They never done it. They not going to do it. Otherwise, our school systems will be better. Our living arrangements will be better. Jobs will be better. And when it comes down to the black community, we suffer the most. So, again, I'm going to say no. I'm not never going to vote again because they can't help me. Thank you, sister. Thank you for that answer. Do we have a call? No, sir. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Okay, so um, for those who agree or who do feel that we should participate in the political process and that we should at least have our our communities that are not aware of the policies they're not aware of the politics that goes on. We have a duty, I feel, for those who are aware of what's going on. You have a duty to your community to address the issues and expose what's in the dark. Okay, but this question I want to ask Brother Omar, should African Americans raise a voter block to build our power, to build, to build our voting power? That was the question I was posed, so I wanted to ask you, brother. You know, as I, uh, as I reflect back on the uh, previous call, I'm going to ask that question just to see. Yes, sir. Uh, Donald Trump is the face of white America. Yes, sir. It was in 1976 that Donald Trump was fined in court for discriminating against black folk in housing in New York City. He paid a $15 million fine. He was dragged back into court in 1979 for the same discriminatory practices because he didn't want black folks staying in his apartments in New York. The same Donald Trump that was asked recently about David Duke endorsing his, his, uh, him as the presidential uh, uh, candidate. And he, ain't, he didn't know David Duke. He has a long history of knowing David Duke. And everybody knows David Duke was at one time the Grand Wizard of the Ku Klux Klan. He won a public office down in Louisiana and ran for government in Louisiana. But he knows David Duke very well. Here's a man that's also talking about Muslims being under 24-hour surveillance in this country. I'm a Muslim. Come surveil me. <laughs> and he's talking about bombing Muslims in other countries. If you want to start a world war, that's a good way to start it. Because every Muslim is not like the ones that are going out and blowing up people indiscriminately because the Quran doesn't teach that. Mm -hmm. But if you're going to bomb an innocent nation like we've done in Iraq, we, we set off ISIS and Al-Qaeda by what we did to the Muslims in those countries, Afghanistan and Iraq. They had nothing to do with the world.
World Trade Center. Not anything to do with it. We won't even go and investigate it. Now let's go back to the question. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yes, sir. Should African Americans raise up a voter's block to build a voter power? What we should do is do like Jewish Americans. Mm -hmm. Raise up a voting block. They came to APAC in, in Washington, D.C. All these candidates did. Hillary Clinton gave a speech supporting the Jewish nation of, of Israel, which is really an outlaw nation because of what they did in 1948. The United Nations offered them land because they, they wanted a homeland. They have never been to Israel in their life unless they went there as a tourist. But the United Nations offered them a homeland. And they offered them part of Brazil for a homeland because they had a slave colony set up in Brazil when, during the slave trade. And they felt like you already got roots in Brazil, so why don't you get a homeland there? So this car out from Brazil and give that to you. They didn't want that. They offered them a homeland in Africa. Since you've been to Africa in the slave trade and also stealing diamonds and gold, why don't we give you some Africa? Since everybody else took Africa and gave it away, we're going to take some and give it to you. They didn't want that, but they were being thrown out of European countries. They were thrown out of France, out of Germany, out of, out of uh, England. They were being thrown out of these countries because they were going in, taking over the economy of those countries. They asked for that, that, that area called Israel, Palestine. That's what they wanted, and that's what they got in 1948, and they've been fighting about it ever since. But they have a strong voting bloc in the United States government, and a lot of what we do in our government is controlled by Israel. We need that kind of power in the black community, that we can have a strong voting, voting bloc, and that when we want things answered in the Congress, then we can say we're not going to give you our vote unless you take care of us the way you take care of the Jewish people. Nothing wrong with that. You got, you got to buy your politician today with your vote. Well put, bro. We have a call? Yes, sir. Come on, call. Yeah. Go ahead, call. You on there? Yeah, brother. Omar, he, he, you remember uh, reading about the Berlin Conference, don't you, brother Omar? Yes, sir. Okay. They're all excited over that little Belgium over there. You remember when Belgium was colonized in the Belgium, and they called it Belgian Congo. Yes, sir. And you, you believe in Palmer, you believe in the reap what you sow. Yes, sir. I'm talking about brother Omar. King Leopold, yes, sir. I'm going to hang up and listen to you respond. But you know what I'm talking about. Thank you, brother. Yes, sir. Your King, King Leopold from Belgium, he colonized the, the, the Congo. He was taking out rubber at that time. And any other resource he could rape and rob out of that country. And if you look at the photos on Google, they show you where when they were picking the rubber, if you didn't pick enough rubber, they would chop off one of your hands. Mm -hmm. They would smoke the hand and put you in a basket and send it to King Leopold with an apology note saying that this hand offended you. And so now we're going to pick more rubber with the one hand we got left than we had with the two hands that we started out with. Mm -hmm. They would take men, and when they were slow picking rubber, they would stand them in, in a line, like, like you stand in a line at, at, the lunch, at the lunch counter. And then they would, they would count the bullets they gave to those black soldiers they, that they had in charge of those, those people over there. And they would make sure that one bullet would kill two or three people. They stand you straight back to back, chest to chest, and make sure that bullet went through two or three of you. So that bullet would count. But King Leopold did it under the, 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 the auspices of a 501c3 nonprofit group. And it was, 20, it was 23 million, million people in the Congo, and when they finished, there was only 13 million people. 10 million people died. If that in a Holocaust, I'd eat my hat. But they don't even talk about that in our history, and they need to spread that around the globe. That's right. And that's right. I was on my way to Memphis this morning, and I seen the big sign, vote for Trump. Let's make America great again. I want to know, for who? <laughs> Who will it be great for again? Uh, but brother, brother Talu, mm -hmm. what what is required to get this voting block done? What what would we need to do to, to go about that? Actually, we have a senseless voting block right now. Okay. An example of Clinton's black people are putting her in the forefront around the country. Mm -hmm. That's a voting block. Mm -hmm. if, if, if she didn't have the black, her black folks, mm -hmm. she would be nowhere near yes. where she is today. Mm -hmm. Nowhere near. Mm -hmm. So we have a black voting block, but it doesn't have a brain. It doesn't want to debate the issue. See, look, intelligence is this. Tell me what's on your mind, and I'm going to tell you what's on mine. And let's strike a compromise. Black people in American politics don't want that. They don't want to hear both sides of the story. They want 
the slave master. The slave master, believe it or not, out of Clinton's. Why? The slave master did something that was really freaky. You know, it's sort of like the more you beat them, the more they like you. Learn mm -hmm. mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Right, and that's the truth. Look, the Clintons created the pipeline that we all talk about so much mm -hmm. from school to prison. Mm -hmm. They created that monster mm -hmm. with the crime bill mm -hmm. back in 1993. Yes, yes. They created that. Yes. Well, if, if the group of boys are standing on the corner, one throw a rock, they all go to jail. Yes. Oh, yes. They created that. Yes. Okay. It is because of the Clinton that millions of black men and boys are in prison. Yes. We like that. Black folks love that. Because the more you punish them, the more you, they like you. They like that. It's the Clinton's policy that got single mothers thrown out of public houses because of what one of those little bad cheap kids did. You, you understand what I'm saying? It's the Clinton policy that threw millions of poor people, primarily black folks, off of government aids and things that they needed to have some kind of standard of living anyway. Don't you remember when they all were collapsing and applauding because Clinton cut the welfare roll? That sound good. But it actually touched millions of families' hearts. Their standard of living took money straight out of their pocket immediately. Okay? So now, so the more you beat the slave, the more he likes the master. And that's what's going on. Clinton, Clinton, the Clintons are enacting a southern policy. Y'all, you ever heard that one? There's a southern political policy strategy that is get the white to get the racist white people's vote in the south the southern states the red states go after the red states inflame them with racism and hate and they'll come out and vote in droves that's the clinton's political policy that's why of course now we can't distinguish ourselves from the racist whites so when we hear the Clintons talk, we think they're talking to us, but they're really talking to the racist white boys and girls, okay? So that strategy is working for Mrs. Clinton. Working fine. Because we think that they love us. We don't need to hear the other side or Bernie Sanders' side. We don't need to hear that because the Clintons love us. Because they beat us mercilessly. You know, beat us down in the ground, kick us in our faces, and we just think that they're the best people. So we to answer that question again. We already have a voting block, but it's a senseless, it's a mindless voting block. Thank you, bro. Call, call, come on, call. Hi, I, um, call in to ask you about something that I thought was What's your name, Carla? Thank you, Angie. Thank you for calling, Angie. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, and, and I I kind of agree with that with the local policy because uh, with, with our local government because I know we can make a immediate change as far as your local city councilmen, your local judges. For example, you know. Uh, the youngest judge in South and easily South Carolina is a 25-year-old black or African American lady by the name of Jasmine Tweedy. And why I say that's great is because, you know, for it's a difference between when we have a black lady that's seeing through our perspective, has been through what we we have been through, and then an older white man. Um, 
So she, they will be able to empathize with us, us better. I feel. Carla, come on. she's a woman, you know, they feel this would be uh, record-breaking, so I agree with you on that issue right there. Jeffrey, I want to thank, thank you for calling, brother. Uh, Jeffrey, I want to ask you then, with all this information said about the Clinton, should Hillary be moved out of the way to make way for Bernie Sanders? How do you feel, uh, or what do you think about that? Uh, I I definitely uh, agree that Hillary Clinton should, should step aside. I was I was joking with my brother earlier this week. It seems like every time uh, Hillary and, and Bernie Sanders get in the debate, she can't handle it. Uh, and it seems like at the end of the debate, I, I just see her walking off stage, uh, just throwing a tantrum, um, telling her husband, uh, Bill, I'm never going to be president. You know? <laughs> But she should definitely uh, yeah. move aside. And my reason for saying that is she can't be trusted. Right. Just point blank, period. We need to give another guy a chance who, who uh, at least out in the forefront is telling us that he has the hearts um, uh, of the people in his interests. When um, I, I, I think earlier there was a comment that says that uh, Hillary just seems like she's just um, uh, repeating Bernie Sanders' agenda now, she's only doing that to try to steal his voters. But trust me, um, Hillary Clinton knows very well the game of bait and switch. So I, I want to warn everybody out there who may be hypnotized by her, um, I don't know, her fe femininity or her smile or whatever, whatever she is uh, that, that makes you think that she, she really cares. But um, just check her history. And some of that history you won't be able to get because um, I think they only released, what, 1% of those personal emails? That, right. So it's about 99% of the chance she's probably lying. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> it sounds like we got a caller. Caller, introduce yourself and go ahead. I'm going to tell uh, Omar that blacks and Americans are not the same. Sanders too weak to be the president? Uh, let's, let's answer the second question first. <laughs> you know, America is used to answering all of its problems with guns. Anytime there's a problem, they feel like you should kill it. Mm -hmm. So that's why they like Trump and Cruz. They're going to go blow up somebody because America got a problem. You're going to go kill it. They feel like Bernie Sanders ain't in the kill mode yet. You might not ever get there. When that when he was speaking the other day on the West Coast and a bird landed mm -hmm. 
on the on the podium where he was, not on the roster. And then the people were just enthusiastic and just excited about the bird landing. And then Bernie, Bernie Sanders made a moment out. He said that this bird is, is a really a dove asking for world peace. Because he feels like we can all live together in the world in peace. America, if you look at America, and this is the mindset of America, if you take all the money we spent for weapons of war, take the next 10 countries, the next 10 largest countries put together, America spent more money by itself than the next 10 countries put together. That's including China, Russia, Germany, Italy, France. Any 10 countries you can put together, America spent more by itself. That military budget is outrageous, and that money we should be spending for the infrastructure of this country, for the educational system in this country. And now you got two people who, are in the same mindset, we're gonna go blow up somebody. Right. And Bernie Sanders is not saying that. He's saying we're gonna rebuild our infrastructure, take care of our, our poor, our indigent, and rebuild the middle class. Let's go to the, second, the first question. Then we're gonna answer second. Hillary Clinton, if you look at her record, this woman is another war hawk. She's the one that's responsible for us going and destabilizing the country of Libya, a country that was not in a, in a situation where it was terrorizing its people. Think about that. Let's say if somebody in Russia didn't like President Obama or who we put in the White House after he leaves, and they decide they want to get rid of Obama. When we go to war with that country, they came over here trying to assassinate him if it was a government plot to do it. Why do we have the right? What, can, what kind of thing do we have that we can go and take another country's leader out? and put our own leader in because we don't like the way their leaders lead in their country. What kind of mentality they accept white supremacy? That's the mindset I see in Hillary Clinton. That's the mindset I see in, in, Donald, in, in Cruz. That's the mindset I see in Donald Trump. They all should be removed out of the way, if you want my opinion. Mm -hmm. Every one of them should be eliminated from the game. Thank you, bro. Thank you. I heard uh, Bernie Sanders say that he wanted to demilitarize our police a local police. Yes. Um, and he also stated what you said. We have one of the highest um, spending budget for military and one of the lowest for our public uh, education. So he he told um, to, you know, he wanted to, or he's saying that one of his agendas is for free uh, tuition for colleges for, for people. And I believe they, they would help us out a lot, though. Um, so... You know, they do it in Europe already. Free tuition. All the way through college. All the way through. Yeah. He, he, want, he want everybody to have health care. Mm -hmm. um, he, he feels that that is a right to have health care. You should have health care. It, it, it's not up for debate. And you should have the best health care that, that our system offers. So I don't see anything wrong with that. Um, I, I really don't see how we can argue with some of the, the points. Unless you want to keep the lowest of, of the society down. If you want to keep them in uh, a state of helplessness, then you, you will do what you have to do to prevent any benefits um, coming to that group. So, and we as African Americans, as we all know, we have the lowest total goal of everything. So I can see on both sides how one say, hey, we shouldn't vote because, hey, what has, what has it got us so far? Okay, we got big houses, big cars, but look at us, we still number one and diabetes, we still the number one and getting killed by these police officers. No justice has been provided. And we are getting the promises. So we got I, a phone call. I, come on, call. Yeah, bro, I'm out here my phone. You know all these are politicians like Donald Trump. He's out of Queens. Al Sharpton, he's out of New York too. Hillary, she went up to New York. You know how many you remember uh, Rudy Giuliani? He was so against the African American. That American politics is just like New York City now. Even Bernie Sanders up in Vermont said he's going to take down Wall Street. You know what I'm The black, you know, David Deacon, if African American is not prosperous in New York, why would you think black folks are going to be prosperous all across the country? These are New York uh, people want to run our government. This one said that, this one said that Bernie, he said he want to raise, you know, money for the inner city. And I said, who's going to be the new African-American people? Because we pay taxes. We pay a lot of taxes for 400 years. And we should have a, uh, we should have a, some kind of, some kind of like a state of this. Who want to be black now? Look at New York. Look how many black folks went to prison in New York. Look how many black folks left uh, uh, New York City. Look how many black people are coming in New York City. 
You don't see no African American mayors and governors today. The ones that these are New York politicians coming and talking to people and, and, and selling a bill of dealers. I'm saying like Reverend Al, he should be running for uh, president, but he just sitting behind the scene. Uh, in my opinion, he probably was like, I just got a lot of African Americans why they so wrapped up with Donald Trump because they looking at his four billion dollars, like those hundred dollars a pound. They not looking at Donald Trump as a candidate. They say, what you gonna break off for me? I already know how African American people look at the state of New York right now. These African American people are very prominent there besides the basketball player. Are you there? Yeah, we are. Yes, sir. That's what I'm saying. Look at New York. Donald Trump, he's from Queens. Hillary, she's, she was a son of the death. And I'm going to give you a good example. Look in the Arkansas. Look at the city of Pine Bluff. It's still more than when I was there. Little Rock, it's not on the map. So that's why I said that I hope a lot of people use their vote. Why? Bernie Trump said that 1% of us, I mean, 1% of Wall Street is controlling all of us. I'm going for Bernie. He, he said, I know how to bring the money back to America because you have to, I don't say, you have to uh, bring some of this wealth in line to some of these poor well, folks. Look at the gap. Billionaires, and you got people barely okay, making it. Like the was saying. The government should be taking care of poor folks. Okay, Alan. All right. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Alan. Brother Tulu. Yes, sir. In our history, in the United States, has there been, or if, if you can recall, any African American leader or leaders who have created a political agenda or platform specifically for African Americans? No, no, we, we've not had that. Um, as I reflect on the most progressive organization, the Nation of Islam, and then under the leadership of Imam David e. Muhammad, that movement, uh, it was primarily about religion, it was uh, nationalism, building a nation, acquiring our own land, but for a complete political platform, no. Okay, that was parts and segments of it. But what, what, I, in, in, what I would like to address the, course, the previous question oh, also yes, sir. about uh, uh, Hillary Clinton. Um, now, I'm going to tell you why I say we're, we're mindless when it comes to our political voting block. Well, another reason, we have overwhelmingly, as we said earlier, uh, supported Hillary. Okay, without any any debate, really, no debate, just Hillary. Okay, but when you think about it, you have uh, uh, a family that has already served eight years in the presidency. They concocted and construed a way to manipulate the people to get eight more years. That in itself is the problem. That's a sneaky way of punishing power all over again. But it, isn't it strange that I will keep, I, I will keep it like that kind of stuff. We like that undercutting, that scheme, conniving ways of politics. That's why we vote in the biggest block you can for the perpetrators who are the Clintons. Isn't eight years enough? Doesn't the law say after eight years you can't run again? Mm -hmm. But when you twist it around and put the wife in there, aren't you getting, aren't you, aren't you undercutting, killing the spirit of that eight year run and then issuing in or urging in another political opportunity for power in your own name? Mm -hmm. That's a trick. That's, that's bamboozling in the maximum, right? And we fall for that crap. You know, and and I'm, I'm going to say this one thing, and I'm done. I was once the first vice chair of the Democratic Party, chair of the county Democratic Party, and became the chairman of the party. Something just embarrassing as I could imagine uh, during our delegate convention a couple of weeks or so ago. <laughs> promise you. You had Bernie Sanders people on one side of the building and Hillary Clinton's people on the other side of the building. I'm telling you, like hundreds of black people on Hillary's side. On the Bernie Sanders side, four. 
I'm included. Judge Joe Brown and two other more people. See, so where is the debate? That, that's my point. Where is the debate? The, the debate, if there was an intelligent debate on issues, moral rights, and these types of things, there would be more black people over on the Bernie Sanders side. But if you kill the debate and marshal all the people, all the black people, into the hands of the master of where, of where you can't debate, you have to do what the master says. Then what you get? You get part of the, poly, the, the, the political process. You, you see what I'm saying? So I agree with your, your position out of frustration that what the use in voting? If all the black folks just gonna go over there just because it's a woman, mm. just because it's Clinton. Yeah, exactly. I mean, why all of us go over there for what? Come on, Carl. Go ahead, bro, Cosby. Uh, yes, good afternoon, brother. Good afternoon, uh, brother. I agree uh, that uh, the residents of all African American communities should, patients should vote for the 2016 election. Uh, absolutely, uh, because for a couple of reasons. One, we have a fundamental uh, race fundamental situation, reasons why at the end of white domination uh, in the political process in America. Majority. This is the end. This will be the last election. Two, with the importing of immigrant folks is accelerating, as you can see with Arab and with Mexican and with Asian from, from India, and that's going to grow. That will neutralize the African economic, not economic quality, as an African political power as well. Okay. Uh, two Supreme Court judges will be um, selected in the next presidential session. Okay, brother, we got, we got 30 seconds. That in mind, so uh, the lecture of the evils is always going to be the benefit, and intelligent people do that. We choose the lesson of the evil because we have to minimize strength of our opposition day after the election. We have to Yes, thank you for your uh, call, Brother Cosby. Uh, we have one more announcement to, to give. Uh, go ahead, Brother. Uh, quickly, I just want to remind the audience again about April the 2nd. We're asking the men to come out to E.H. Crump Park, also known as the Park of uh, Victims of Violent Crime. Uh, we're going to convene a meeting uh, of men, and the meeting is, is done for us to be able to uh, come together to address the critical crisis of homicides and violence in, in our community. Look forward to seeing everybody there uh, April the 2nd at 11 o'clock. Okay, thank you. Uh, and again, I want to thank Brother Wallace Red for allowing me to substitute as a moderator today on the Love Power Show. Again, I want to say to all the listening audience, thank you for tuning in. Please tune in every Sunday at 2 p.m. WMQM 1600. Uh, this is the Love Power Show, and where we talk about the relevant issues um, for today and our future. So thank you for tuning in. This is the Love Power Show. Inside the 